Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful day in October. It's supposed to be about 76 degrees today. So we're gonna see if we can get the physical part of the install of Christmas lights on my house uh, done today, which is going to require a little bit of planning and a little bit of forethought. So I'm gonna walk you through my process on this one. So my home is a modified split level and the intention is to run the lights up this side of the garage since when you come into the cul-de-sac in my house you kind of come in this way. So run it up this side, down along the roof line like that and up into the peaks and then around the other side uh, into the other peaks. The problem I'm going to have with that is these lights are directional. The pattern tends to flow and that causes a problem for the peaks. So I think what I'm gonna do is look at two zones, but let's take a look at the other side of the house here. So here's the opposite side of the house. So you come kind of off the garage that we just looked at. We're gonna come down the side here, across there's another peak here, over, and I'm gonna run uh, most of the way down this side of the house as well. And that creates a couple problems for power and signal. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is treating the peaks as a separate zone. So I'm gonna run a different controller for the peaks than I run from the roof line. The software that I have allows me to pair those back together for patterning and things like that, but that'll let me control the colors that are up in the peaks separate from the roof line so I can get a little bit more of a dynamic presentation going. The other challenge we're going to face is power. So I know with the 12 volt system, I can run about 50 feet. So if I run 20 feet on the side roof line here, coming back and then across. So if 20 feet goes there, and then I have this line up here heading towards the garage. That should allow me to get all the way to the garage and run my power and my signal and my controller and everything in the garage, which means I don't have to climb into the attic and run wires and do all of that. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to power uh, kind of from this corner right here and that that'll be enough uh, electric to get me across the roof line and down that side without having to run any injection points. Similarly, I'm hoping that the power that I run for the peak here, when I run that on a signal wire kind of hidden behind the roof line piece, will be enough to power this peak up here without having to do any injection either. So all of my power points and everything hopefully will be able to live in the garage kind of right on that corner. So to discuss the plan, let's take a look at the house itself. Uh, for that, I've got this picture, which I pulled off of Bing Maps. So it's just a bird's eye view of my home, but it lets us illustrate uh, how I'm going to run this and some of the finer points of the planning that we need to do. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to split my house into two different zones. The first zone or the first segment of lights is going to be the roof line. So this red line indicates uh, how my lights are going to run along the peak. I'm not going all the way back to the corners. Um, partially because of the way these lights are going to lay and partially just because nobody ever sees that and I don't care so much. So I'm primarily just going to run this roof line and then I'll run a secondary zone for the peaks. Now when you're looking at how these lights are actually going to run, one of the things we have to consider is direction. The data signal for these lights is very directional. If you look at the LED strip itself, you're going to see a little arrow and it's a very important that the data always travels in that direction and that when you're installing the strings, you never reverse them. So you never flip one of the strings over and cause that to run the wrong direction. It has to do with the way the lights address. So my data path is going to start from the back corner of my garage and it's gonna work all the way around the house to the deck side. Similarly with the peaks, it's gonna start from the left according to this map and work its way to the right. Now that means when I end the first peak and move to the smaller one, I'm going to have to run a wire that has the data signal and probably the power from the corner of the peak into my garage and then sneak it out along the gutters and run it into the second peak so that I have one contiguous connection between the two. A few other ways to do it, but that's going to work well for me in my setup. Now the next thing we have to think about is power. For the peaks, I don't have to worry about power. Uh, the line is short enough that I can run it once into the source, so into the initial connection point and then it's going to be able to pull across to the other peak, we're gonna be fine. For the roof line, however, I'm looking at uh, enough length as far as my lights go, it's about 150 feet or so, that I'm gonna to have to inject some power. So initially, 
the power is going to be provided where the lights come out of the garage. So I'll have an initial run there. I'm going to inject power in two additional spots. I'm going to go on the corner of my garage in the front and then on the back corner of my porch. Now, in order for this to work, I have to make sure that I have an end to my lights in the corner of my porch. So from an install, I'm going to start at the corner of my porch and work backwards. So I'm going to be installing the lights against the directional arrow, working my way backwards around the garage, and then ending wherever the string ends along the side of the garage. That gives me a little bit of flexibility. So I'm going to work from that point that I know I have to be able to connect power to, and then work back to a start. After that, I'll move along the front of the house and then again back down the side as far as my lights take me from the equipment and the materials I've already bought. So let's talk about the actual physical connection then. For my setup I'm using 12 volt LEDs. So I have two 12 volt LED power supplies. Each of these puts out 12 volt 30 amp. Uh, so we've got that set. Each one has three different channels. So three different sets of power that I can feed. So I have a total of six power connection points. I have two 5 volt controllers and then I have my 12 volt LEDs and I've got them split on the graphic for the peak at the top and the roof line at the bottom. So let's talk the initial easy connection. I know I'm going to have to run data and ground from the controllers to the LEDs. So if that's simple enough. We'll run those connections. But now we get into power and power is going to get a little bit trickier because I have a number of different spots I have to do a number of things including the controllers that I want to be able to power off these power supplies. So controllers first. I'm going to power both of the controllers from the top power supply. Now the power supply puts out 12 volts. My controllers want 5 volts. So I'm going to have to down convert those. And there's a little adapter that I bought that I'll link down in the description that allows me to do that. So I'll run from the power supply into the converter to bring it down to 5 volts and then into the controller. From the controller then to the lights. Now my lights are 12 volt. So a 5 volt power supply is not going to light them up properly. So I'm going to have to run directly from the power supply to my LEDs as well. So for the top power supply, since I only need a single connection point on the peaks, I'm going to run my power there. Now it's important when you're doing something like this, if you're doing a 12 volt setup, if you're running lights in this manner, you want to make sure that you're not connecting across power supplies. I don't want to run a feed from two different power supplies into the same set of strips. Uh, it can cause fires, it can cause a whole bunch of really negative issues, don't do it. If you have to run more than one power supply, segment your strips so that your power supplies aren't crossing across them, just to make it a safer install. For the roof line, since I have three power connections and I have three source connections on the bottom power supply, I'm going to run the bottom power supply to use those. So I've got the controller for the roof line running off of power supply one, I have the power supply for the roof line running off of power supply 2. Now the one thing with that, if you're ever going to cross that or if you're running a separate power supply from your controller, it's important that you have a common ground between your controller and your power supply. I'm running both a ground and a data connection directly to the lights from the controller. I'm running ground and power to the lights. So technically I'm on a common ground, but just to be careful and just to be certain that I don't have any issues with the way the data signal is going to work, I'm going to run an additional ground from that second power supply up into my second controller just to verify that they're all on that same common uniform ground and we'll have a nice clean connection that doesn't flicker and doesn't hopefully uh, cause a lot of issues for us. So that's the basic setup. I have two controllers, two down converters, two power supplies, and about uh, nine LED strips running right now. Uh, and then running between 12 volt and 5 volt. So we've got our plan pretty firmly in place and the install is started. That's what all of this stuff back here is. Obviously that's not how it's gonna look when this is done. That's purely just so I can connect it, verify it's working. I'll have it finalized and probably connected to a board and wired. We'll show that in the next video. But uh, just as I can kind of see it as I go, I've got it all connected somewhat temporarily here with a circuit board hanging down in space and all of those kinds of fun things. So my install is truly in flight. I'm going to do a separate video about uh, the specifics of that install and some of the lessons that I've learned. So we're going to end this one right here, but this being the end of a DIY dad video, I of course owe you a dad joke. And I got this one from my seven year old son who apparently has been sharing dad jokes uh, that are Halloween related. And since Halloween's in two days, uh, we'll go that route. So 
Why do ghosts hate dance parties? Because they have nobody to dance with. All right, remember with any DIY project, the most important step is just to do it. No one's going to see the flaws unless you point them out to them. Uh, please have a great day and safe holiday. See you in the next video. Bye.